Important Imp reminder. Unlike most of the other religious books, for example, the Bible, which was written decades and decades after the events and is in the past tense, the Quran was revealed dynamically. In other words, aside from a few chapters which were revealed in one go, the vast majority of the Quranic verses were revealed in response to events in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. This revelation spanned 23 years, and each year, in the month of Ramadan, Gabriel revised that year's revelation with the Prophet Muhammad. In the final year of the revelation, the 23rd year, Gabriel visited the Prophet Muhammad twice. The Prophet Muhammad passed away soon after. The Prophet Muhammad, who was unlettered and could neither read nor write, would recite back what was revealed to him to his companions, who would memorize the verses while his scribes would write them down. Over 1,446 years later, we are still making so many fascinating discoveries and seeing signs of divine origin in the Quran. Let's look at one astonishing example. Hebrew names in the Quran. The Quran narrates brief stories of some past prophets sent to their people. For example, Abraham, Ibrahim, Zachariah, Zachariah, John the Baptist, Yahya, and so on. Let's pick five prophets mentioned in the Quran and see what subtleties are hidden within the verses mentioning them. Abraham It is the religion of your father, Abraham. Ibrahim is the name of this mighty prophet in Arabic, Abraham in English, and Avraham in Hebrew, which means father of many. Now, let's look at the Quranic verse again. As you can see, the name of this mighty prophet is given in Arabic, but the verse deliberately uses your father, which is the meaning of the name in Hebrew. Moreover, of many, indicates plurality, and the pronoun kum, from a bi kum, your father, is also plural. Ishmael And remember when Abraham raised the foundation of the house with Ismail, both praying, Our Lord, accept this from us. You are indeed the all hearing, all knowing. Ismail is the name of this noble prophet and son of a prophet in Arabic. Ishmael is in English, and Yishmael is in Hebrew and means, God hears. Let's go check the verse again. We can see where the name Ismail appears. We can also see the definition of Ismail, all hearing Lord, given subtly in the verses. Isaac And his wife was standing by, so she left. One then we gave her good news of the birth of Isaac, and, after him, Jacob. Ishok is the name of this noble prophet, the brother and son of prophets, Isaac in English, and in Hebrew as Yitzhok, which means laughter. Let's check the verse again. The name of this noble prophet in Arabic appears twice in this verse, as we can see. What's interesting is the choice of a specific word in the verse, highlighting just one specific reaction of the wife of Abraham. The word is dahikot, ignoring far, which is a conjunctive letter, the same as, and, then, so, etc. This word, which hasn't been used anywhere else in the Quran in this format, means, she laughed. And astonishingly, 
We are told of this reaction of laughter of the wife of Abraham when she was told she would have a son called Yitzhak, whose name means laughter. There is a second amazing subtlety in the choice of the subsequent words in the verse. The words are, Minwara, ignore the war, it's there as a conjunction similar to, and, also, including, and so on. So, what does Minwara actually mean? It actually means, behind, to follow, etc. The verse continues by stating, We gave her, the wife of Abraham, the glad tidings of Isaac, and behind Isaac, Jacob, Yaqub in Arabic, and Yaqov in Hebrew. So, what is remarkable about using behind? Well, it was used to give the glad tidings of Jacob, whose name in Hebrew means, be behind, to follow. Zachariah this is a reminder of your Lord's mercy to his servant Zachariah. Zachariah is the name of this noble prophet in Arabic, Zachariah in English, Zachariah in Hebrew, which means, God remembers. Let's return to the verse for any subtleties. This is the name of this noble prophet. Zechariah, in Arabic in the verse. However, the subtlety is in the choice of words at the start of this verse, mainly, Dikru and Rabbika, which means, a reminder of your Lord. Amazingly, Zechariah in Hebrew means, God remembers. John the Baptist it was later said, O John, hold firmly to the scriptures, and we granted him wisdom while he was still a child. As well as purity and compassion from us, and he was God fearing. The name of this noble prophet of Allah in Arabic is Yahya, and in English, John, also known as the Baptist, and in Hebrew, it's Yohanan, which means, God has shown compassion. Let's re-examine the verses. The name of this noble prophet in Arabic is given here. The first letter is Ya, which is normally written like this, however, in the Quran it's mainly written like this, like we see here. And the reason for that is also astonishing, and will be the subject for a different video, Allah willing. This year is used in an address, in the same way that, O, oh, is used in English. Now that we have explained this, we can look closely at the gem we find here, and who knows, there might be others here yet to be discovered. If we look at the verse 13 on the left, where Allah the Almighty continues from the previous verse in informing us with what he had bestowed upon John the Baptist, the very first line tells us he bestowed upon, or granted, or conferred upon John, Hananon, in Arabic, and compassion in English, which astonishingly is the meaning of the Hebrew name of this noble prophet, Yohanan. These along with thousands of other subtleties and content that could not be the product of a human mind, let alone an unlettered one, one who could not read or write, that convinced nearly two billion Muslims that without a shadow of a doubt, this Quran is a revelation from the Almighty Creator of the heavens and the earth. Please support this channel by liking, commenting, subscribing and sharing. Thank you.